Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wilkie and I'm here with Zenrot. Hello. And hello, we're here for our third episode. If you don't know what this uh, series is about, me and Zen wanted an excuse to go through the back catalog of a bunch of Shonen Jump anime and we figured what better way to make an excuse than to make a video series talking about the specific episodes within. <laughs> and we decided that whole back catalog should only be all 7,000 episodes of Gintama. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if we if we really wanted to be like yo, we could have started with One Piece. <laughs> the one the one that imagine if we actually did start with One Piece. And I said, all right, so see you guys in three years when we get to episode one thousand, and then we have to start it over again because they will keep releasing episodes since then. At least Gintama is not that. That's uh, true. Crazy. At least it's over. <laughs> yes, at least Gintama is over. One Piece is still going. <laughs> <laughs> by the time we hit 1000 they will have 2000 um so yeah we started with kintama we were going to originally go through 10 episodes but zen was very busy with work so we are going to do five which is perfectly fine because later down the road we were gonna have to do five episodes regardless to make it even because it was actually bothering me that we had five and also the 50 episode 50 marks the end of this season one so uh it works out in the end it all works out in the end. So we're going to be going through episodes uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Uh, here's the funny thing. This is a callback to the last episode when I said, actually, we only watched nine episodes. We did watch ten episodes. I just didn't realize in my head that when you're doing accounting, you count the number itself. So even though 16 through 20 is four... When you actually count it out, right, it's, it's, five it's five because you have to do episode 16, yeah. Yeah, 16 and 17, 18, 19, 20. And when I was doing that to myself like a dumbass sitting in the dark going like, wait a minute, how does this, how does this number shit work? <laughs> how is it four numbers but five episodes? I was about to call up my friend who's like a, a super heavy mathematician for the government and go like, motherfucker, explain this to me because I don't know. Just... <laughs> I've lost again. Save me. <laughs> I need your explanation on this. He's like, well, uh, maybe I should still do that. But anyway, we're going to start with episode 16, which the title of it is called, If You Stop and Think About It, Your Life's a Lot Longer as an Old Guy Than a Kid. Whoa. Scary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zen, why don't you tell us what it's about? So this episode uh, is, I don't know if it's the first time we've seen him since then. I don't remember, but yes, uh, Hasegawa's back. Yeah. Okay. And he lost his job because he punched the prince in the episode where they kill his pet. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's like in a, in a park and Kagura is like fucking loser. And she leaves him. I don't know why it's really funny to me that they keep calling him a fucking loser after being the reason that he keeps fucking himself over. I don't know why that's funny to me, but she leaves and she makes fun of him. And he's like, that's it. I'm going to like turn my life around. And he talks about what happened to him. And he, he ran away. He refused to commit seppuku because he was too afraid. And then his wife left him. Uh, and he met Gintoki and Gintoki like inspires him to turn his life around. And he keeps going to job interviews that keep turning him away because he refuses to take off his sunglasses. Mm -hmm. So uh, Gintoki finally convinces him to take off his sunglasses. And uh, he like brushes his hair and he looks more like a stereotypical salaryman employee. And he gets a taxi driver job. Like and they end up, yeah, like right away. And they end up having to drive the prince that he punched. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, he wants to go to the zoo to see a panda. But then a man who uh, they met earlier, or Hasegawa met earlier, whose wife is pregnant, she went into labor, and he was like, please, we need the taxi to get her to the hospital. And the prince guy was like, no, fuck you, I don't care. And so Hasegawa punches him again uh, and gets fired again. And then once again is at the park with Kagura, who calls him a fucking loser and leaves. <laughs> <laughs> and then the end bit for this one is, which is maybe the saddest end bit that we've had, is him on the bench, and it's nighttime, and he goes... <sighs> like, it's a really <laughs> defeated sigh at the end. He's like, ah, damn yep. it. Like, even after <laughs> his big uh, episode. So just to make reference to it, because this is maybe the most I've ever felt like this was a 2006 anime, the thing that she keeps calling him is a dork. Which stands short for dar for dumb old retarded kook. Yeah, how to tell that it's not a contemporary uh, anime? 
Yes, but also funny enough... But the enough, best it's... part is every time el- someone else says dork, it means something different. Yes, um, they keep adding to it. Like, they keep adding a word to it. So originally in the Japanese version, they call him a, a madio, which is a translates to a maru de damu na osan, a good-for-nothing old man. And then all the ones that they call him, they call him a... Like, all the things, at least in the Japanese side, they call him, like, a, a good-for-nothing old man, a really uncool old man, uncool-looking old man, really depraved old man, a customer who's really not all right. <laughs> Men, who, men, no one wants to date, which is what Tay calls him when they go on when he's uh, with her for a bit. Uh, fool who unconvincing, unconvincingly feigns ignorance, and then the final one: old man who lives as he wants but unaccomplishes nothing, which is the final put down that Kagura <laughs> gives him. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I actually have written notes this time because <laughs> I had a feeling that'd be better. Uh, what I like, so the things I like from this episode. There's a part in the beginning after she's, like, putting him down, which is really funny for some reason. I'm, I'm with you. Maybe there's something about this character specifically that I'm down with. It's, I'm telling you, it's the it's the dynamic of them being the reason he fucked his life up and then being like, you're a fucking loser, you idiot, for idiot. doing it. Moron, yes. <laughs> it's so fucking funny to me. Uh, but they're playing when they're playing in the park. Sadahara comes to go after her, and she has like this really funny two frame kick just to get him away from her. Oh yeah, where she where she kicks him in the face. <laughs> she kicks him straight in the face, and then he goes back to normal. <laughs> this is also, I think, when I f- they finally started getting me with uh, Katsura's catchphrase, which is say, "I'm not this person. I'm Katsura." Because when he's walking down the park. He sees him, he's like, oh, what do you want, monk? And the monk takes off, he's like, I'm not a monk, I'm Katsura. He would have no idea as to why this character would ever care about <laughs> this, this. By the way, th- that joke has become maybe my favorite joke in the entire series. It's in an episode we haven't talked about yet. Yes. But when he steps on that little kid's toy, and that little <laughs> kid is like, hey, you smelly priest. And he goes, I'm not a smelly priest, I'm Katsura. <laughs> Katsura. <laughs> Yeah, I'm with you. This is this stupid fucking joke for some reason is getting me every time it shows up. It's really funny. It's so simple. When he's in the taxi, some of the things in the taxi, because he's he's driving all the different characters. This kind of feels almost like a Forrest Gump type episode where each character that we've met so far has an interaction with him in some way. And when he's in the uh, in the taxi before then, when he's out to go get a drink, there's a person who says like, "I think I'm in love," and she says, and she says to him, "No, I think you need to go to the hospital." And then when he's driving the taxi, he talks about like all the people he meets on his journeys, and then you see that guy, and he's like, "Please take me to the hospital." <laughs> like a full day later, <laughs> his stomach is still hurting. Yeah, um, <laughs> he gets in the taxi at the end. Yeah, the the, the yeah. sister goes into the taxi. She says, "Take me there." And then next, Kondo comes in and says, "Take me to where? For, take me to the yeah, exact to same, the place. same place." That she went. Uh, and, also, I really like the place that the um, what's her name? Uh, Ota. Oh, the woman it, he rents from, the old woman. Otose. 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 Uh, the place she goes to is the Staving Off Death Beauty Salon. <laughs> yes, that's pretty good. Uh, when he picks up Katsura, he says, Drive until I see the dawn of New Japan. <laughs> the dawn of a New Japan. <laughs> Which is like, for some reason, also fucking really got me. <laughs> the drive me until you see the Take dawn of me to the dawn of a New Japan. <laughs> Um, Okita goes into the taxi and he, sa- he basically says, run over that guy that looks a lot like Hijikata. Like, he says, like, I need you to kind of run yeah. over the guy who's... <laughs> this is the guy smoking. Run him over, but try not to kill him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, when the prince, which I've marked in my notes as Marlon Brando alien, <laughs> because he really does sound a lot like Marlon Brando, when he gets, when he notices him for the first time, he doesn't realize who that character is, but he doesn't want Gintoki to go away from him. Uh, so he tells him, please don't leave. I'm scared and I'm also lonely. <laughs> and like, he's like, what? What? Yeah. <laughs> he says, what are you, a hamster? Yeah, what are you, a hamster? And then... Yeah. Uh, he, he, what, what does he say? He says, I'm scared and also lonely. I might die if you leave me alone. <laughs> if you leave me alone. Uh, when the uh, when Prince Hada, which is his actual name, not just Marlon Brando alien, when he loses his uh, top because for some reason he starts like sh- like uh, soaping his hair up top, uh, he cuts off his like antenna and then he says, "You look a lot like assistant manager." And yeah, so he's he tells Gintoki to give him service, and I don't know what that he was supposed to mean. So yeah. Gintoki starts washing his hair in the back of the taxi. Yeah, and he starts and like then having they a have conversation. to slam the brakes. And when they slam the brakes, he rips his head tentacle thing off. 
Yes. Yeah, and the in. guy's like, I look like an assistant manager now. And Gintoki goes, no, it's all right. You look at least manager level. At least manager level. And then later on, when he's getting uppity with him, he punches him into the back scene and says, I'm not going to take that from an assistant manager. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, th- <laughs> I also like that we, he, the, the theme here is that he's true to himself and he's happy with that, but then they still have to give him that dig where he's a jobless loser. I also like that every time he's having a conscience of faith, Kintoki just kind of shows up and is like just weirdly vague. He's like a vague yeah, samurai. he's there and just gives him like sort of advice. Yeah, he just kind of shows up like he's there in the pachinko player. When he's in the taxi, when he asks him to drive me wherever, and his response is, please be serious, I can't just yeah. drive you wherever, because he doesn't give him a destination. Yeah, what does uh, he say? I just want to see the other side of the horizon. Yeah, I just want to see the other side of the horizon, <laughs> which is very similar to, I just drive until I see the dawn of a new trip in. <laughs> Um, this episode, I think, is uh, very similar to... Th- oh, what did you like from here, by the way, before I move on to that? Uh, Hasegawa as a character, I didn't like him that much the first time, other than the joke mm-hmm. that, that at the very end. And so this episode was basically that joke that I liked, but an entire episode of it. Um, yeah. So that was really good. Um, I like any time that Prince Hada gets shit on, because that character is like... He's obviously designed to be obnoxious. Yes. But uh, it's funny still when he gets shit on all the time. Yeah, um, I guess. And I liked that Okita was in it because he's growing on me a lot. <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> the, uh, there, there was actually, funny enough, a comment going that someone was very interested over you specifically not liking the some of the Shishingumi stuff that from the previous episode. Because they're like, oh, that's very interesting because a lot of uh, Gintama fans really are like, the they're their fan favorites. So maybe it was just like, we'll see how we go on because they're not going away anywhere. So they were very interested yeah, to see I, how I, you would feel. Uh, Hijikata and uh, Okita are growing on me. The The boss, not so much. I still don't really like Kondo very much. But, <laughs> he's very um, much just one joke right now. I feel like yeah, he's actually he, gotten he's just, less. I'm stalking the sister. And I'm a um, gorilla. Yeah, but Hijikata and Okita are growing on me. Yeah. yeah Funnily sure. enough, they were the best part of the Panty Thief episode. <laughs> Yes, I would agree with that too, which I think is, is that the, no, that's not the next that's, one, but that's I think 18 or 19. Yeah, that might that might be. Um so yeah, this episode I think very similar to the first one where they were trying to show you what the show would eventually kind of turn into. I think this is them finally showing off the setting up of basically all these characters at individual levels where the specific jokes that they're doing are now actually working, where it's now just, I guess, a new character enters the scene. I guess in a lot of ways, it's kind of how a sketch comedy show would in theory work with a vast variety of cast, but that only matters if how good is your cast. And I feel like this one is starting to show off, like, even if a cast member shows up and the joke doesn't work, they usually hit it because they're usually able to do their one bit and then just kind of leave, and they're good to go. Uh (laughs) They just do the one thing that they do, and then they leave, and it's really good. Yes, and it's really good. So I think that's working. I I really like this episode. I, the beginning part when they did that translation, and I saw like I don't know where this is gonna go, but then I was like, ah, oh, no, this got me. <laughs> this is this just straight up got me. It's a lot of fun jokes, and I really do like use the Hasegawa, his character that has turned into basically this dude who has had his entire life ruined by these people who continue to shit on him. Is <laughs> really funny. Yep. And he's like their friend now. It's really fucking funny to me. Yeah, they're they're all good friends, but they haven't really done they haven't done much but ruin his life, and yet he's still okay with them. So yeah, that's that episode. I think a pretty good start to the new session of stuff. So, and also a very long title. Very, the the long titles are always the thing that get me the most. I think they kind of kill me. Like this- for real, I don't know why because. A lot of the times, the titles have almost nothing to do with the actual episode. It's, like, tangentially and, related in some yeah, way. Yeah, it's, it's vaguely, like, sort of related. <laughs> mm-hmm. but, uh, and even, that, like, in serious episodes, the titles are still, like, weird. Yeah, like this one for episode 17. 17 yeah. Here, we have sons only take after their father's negative attributes. Uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us what this one's about? So, uh, Katsura bumps into a new character who is from his and, by proxy, Gintoki's past, named uh, Shinsuke, who is also one like a Japan first rebel, 
but like not in the way that Katsura is, because Katsura is doing it for like his own beliefs, whereas Shinsuke just wants revenge, basically. Um, they are back in. They, they cuts back to our cast, and there's like a robot tinker who makes too much noise, and so Gintoki and them's plan to make the noise to make him stop making noise is to out noise him with karaoke. And so they set up giant speakers and start blasting karaoke at his door until he comes out. Um, <clears throat> they meet his, like, robots. And I think they end up going down by the river and, like, try to get him to work on the robots away from the neighborhood so it's not so loud. Yeah, so uh, And you learn a little bit of... Yeah, well, yeah, they kick his ass because it's mm-hmm. Gintama. But after that, uh, they go down to like the river so that he can work on his robots, and they help him work on the robots. Um, and you learn a little, little bit about his past, where it turns out that he joined the war against the aliens, and he ended up dying. Uh, and he ended up being an ally of this Shinsuke guy before they got caught. Um, and so the old man kind of gets convinced by him to use the robots to attack this summer festival. What is it? it? It's the anniversary of when the Amanto came, right? That's yes. what the festival is. The, the, yeah. yeah, the I thought it was called a carnival. It's like it the, makes more sense it's if like you call the, it a festival. It was the festival, yeah. yeah. But uh, so they he convinces the old man to attack the festival with his robots and try to kill the shogun in revenge for his son. Um, he does that, and then Gintoki stops the last robot and destroys it with his wooden sword somehow. Um, which is also a funny thing that I like, even though it was not played for laughs in this. <laughs> Very um, serious when he fucks him up. Yes. And then uh, the robot kind of repeats the words that his son said before he left for war, and he has like this little moment where he doesn't feel like he should still be alive while his son is dead. He doesn't know what to do. And then you see Katsura out on the street talking to Shinsuke again, and they kind of just split off. And then uh, Katsura notices that the old man is in the street making little toys for kids. And he mentions that the old man finally looks happy. And then the episode ends there. Yeah. And that's also where the line of when the he when he destroys that little kid's toy. Yeah. He steps on a little kid's toy and the, the kid says, you broke it. You smelly priest. And he goes, I'm not a smelly priest. I'm Katsura. <laughs> <laughs> it's also funny because he's like super wanted and in disguise. Yeah, he is. They're, they're he's, in, he's he's intentionally in disguise to not be caught. And then yeah, that's, he's, he's telling so, anyone that speaks to him his name. He is. I also want to mention that the, the old man is also being wanted, but his disguise is enough for them not to pick him off the street, I think. So that might just show you how easy it is to hide in this place. As long as you're not showing your face directly, they don't know who you are. So yeah, for this episode... um. I really like the when they're fighting over the karaoke because it very quickly becomes them going like, well, now I want to turn now because it ends up being like, the, look at Shinpachi. He's, look at the shame he has of showing everyone that he has terrible <laughs> singing. He's like, what shame? He's extremely <laughs> happy. He's, and he's yeah, like, like, like he looks like he's having a great time. <laughs> yeah, so then he goes like, okay, I'm next. He's like, no, I'm next. Listen, if we're going to go, then I'm next. And then so Itose and Gintoki start fighting and she's like, uh, well, what if we just do a duet? Like, she's very quickly forgotten what the hell they were there for in the beginning. It's like, let's just do a duet. He's like, I don't want to duet with you. He's like, what do you mean? We can do a great duet together. Let's just do it. And, he, and finally, <laughs> he comes out and goes like, you're too noisy, man. Don't you know people <laughs> live here? <laughs> you're making a ruckus. I like it when uh, uh, Kagura starts playing house with his robot. Because she starts playing house. Yeah, she and plays- she like, she gets really upset. She does. She, like, she, she, she has a shirt with lipstick on it. She's like, "Where have you been? Oh, have you been with that tramp?" And and, and then he, <laughs> and then she starts screaming domestic violence and goes to throw him. Samurai yeah. is the name of the, which is I fucking died so much when she just goes domestic violence and she fucking picks him up and gets ready to yeah. toss awesome. him. And then she goes, um, the his the the maker Genji says, "Please stop playing around." And then she goes, "It might have been playing to you, but it meant the world to me." Yeah, it meant everything to me. She was taking it so fucking serious that I was laughing <laughs> from the get go. She's like, "What is this lipstick?" Like, it's just she's playing house with it, which I thought was very f- really funny. It really got me to like this <laughs> robot she was very like, quickly. Was it that tramp that came to our house for the holiday party? Yeah. 
<laughs> and also she's causing a scene because now everyone's looking at her as she's fighting the yeah robot. like the entire because they're just out in public by the river so everyone's out looking at them yeah just looking like going wow what's going on here um, and then she yeah she screams that's it domestic violence <laughs> domestic violence which is maybe the funniest <laughs> utterance of domestic violence i want to say they i don't know if they do it in the episodes that you watch but there is a callback to domestic violence later on <laughs> where someone screams <laughs> domestic violence <laughs> which for i don't some remember reason, that so it must not have been to okay in it, the, must, it must have been in the latter half you wouldn't notice because gintoki says he goes domestic violence <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah i really like that also like the beginning part where he's talking about his unbeatable robot and she just like rips his arm off and, she, and then she just yeah, takes it with both him. of his arms yeah rips yeah. off both of the arms she takes it with her and even when they come back they only come back because atose told them to please go help him um when they're doing the shooting when they're at the festival and they're playing the shooting game and Hasegawa's running it both Akita and Kagura just start fucking shooting him cuz <laughs> cuz he says like uh he says anything that you can shoot you can take basically so Kagura takes oh, yeah, it he as says, uh, <laughs> yeah you can have anything you can hit so between Okita and her they just start shooting him over and over yeah. again so she goes like I want your shades and then Okita goes I want that I want that watch. I want that jacket. I want <laughs> they just keep fucking like dumping pilot buildings into him as uh, Shinpachi watches. Um when they're talking to each other, Hijikata and Kondo, uh Hijikata thinks that Okita is not taking it seriously cuz he says he's going to the bathroom but he thinks he's just playing in the festival. And Kondo says I always want it's ba- you cannot do that. You have to have trust in your teammates. I believe that Okita's out there fighting like hell, trying to push it out in the bathroom. <laughs> and he says it with such gumption of like, this is supposed to be like, always believe in your team. I believe he's having a hell of a time pushing it out. He's like, well, I think Okita would want you to not believe that is what his reply is. I don't think he actually wants you to believe he's having like, the terrible time taking a dump. <laughs> is that, my literal note says at this point I realize Shinsuke is the same voice actor as Dio. Yes, uh, he is. Which I noticed, which immediately made me like him a lot more when I realized it was Dio doing the voice for him for some reason. Um, when they when the shit starts going down, Shinsuke calls him uh, Kintoki Fangless that he doesn't like. He doesn't have a beast like he does. Like he's going like all crazy on him, but he's like, I am a beast and I have that. And then Kentoki retorts by holding the sword that he was uh, threatening him with and says, you underestimate me. I have a beast that lives with me all the time. His name is Sadaharu. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he fights back. I also like it when Okita and Kagura go ape shit and they start like taking back the festival single handedly. And they and uh, I think Kondo also says like they have the spirit of the festival. They say anyone oh, who no. ruins the he says that they are the spirit of the festival. They're like gods that have come to save the festival. <laughs> and then Tishi kind of goes like, no, <laughs> I think they're just really <laughs> angry. <laughs> Uh, and just to mention it because I I take note of the end bits here. It ends really weirdly with just Kentucky with a bunch of nose hair, which I thought was a maybe a Boba Bo reference for some reason, but it just ends like yeah. That. And it was weird because it wasn't like a joke. He was just sitting there with like long wiggly nose hairs. Yeah, yeah. I was I was very much like I guess was, maybe it's a Boba Bo thing. I don't know. Maybe they just needed an end bit, and they're just like, whatever. We'll do this right here. Uh, so yeah, I liked this episode because I actually really did like the robot stuff. I liked the backstory of showing, of like, the the fact that he was an, the greatest inventor of Edo, and then shit went bad, how his son was lost to him, that the specific, like, the fact that he was just, like, basically on the edge the entire time living with this. Like, it wasn't like that he was... Um, he had to be convinced to it. He was already kind of leaning towards that way, and all it took was to have someone just basically mention, hey, I worked, I I was in the same platoon as your son. Can you attack? Like, we never see what they say to each other, so we only have to kind of assume what he says, but I'm going to assume the only thing he told him was that he reminded him that he served with his son, and that was enough to kind of drive him over the edge. Just cause yeah, because they kind of talk about it, because uh, at first, Kentucky's like, oh, did you, like, trick him into this? And he's like, no, I didn't even really have to talk to him. Yeah, it was already there. I just kind of woke it up a little bit. Yeah, which I thought was a very interesting dynamic of, uh, yeah, he's here for chaos, but very much like he didn't really have to do much convincing. He didn't like force him, which I thought was going to be the main plot point was that he was going to force the old man. 
but it's actually I think a little bit better if the old man just like on purpose just couldn't see like he was on the edge he had enough he didn't know how to deal with his grief and this would kind of drove him over and then by the end when he hears his son's uh same thing again he kind of comes back to earth and you get to have a little happy moment at the end so i thought it was enjoyable i really liked it i think of the five this one i don't know it's i think it's between this one and 16 that might be my favorite we'll see as we talk more about the other ones but i really do think for a personal favorite it's either 16 or 17 for me just because this one had a good mixture of some good funny bits and some good emotional bits. Would you, would you think? Yeah, I think 17 was probably my favorite. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought it was really good. I really liked the the way the emotional stuff was handled because they could have handled it shittily, you know, uh, they could have just made it like, like you said, ah, I, I threatened the old man. I'm the bad guy now, but they kind of didn't do that because it's like a, it's just like the state of the world kind of thing. Right. That like this dude got fucking wronged and, that was it. Like he was ready to lose it. Um, because I think that a lot of like anime, especially like to sit on the whole idea of like, everyone's a good person until they're not. And they flip into like a bad person. And it's like, it's not that black and white. Like this dude has been molding for Years. decades easily. Yeah. Very much yeah. So. And so he's like, all it took was like a match to light it up, you know, like it, it was already there and he just wasn't acting on it yet. Um, which I liked a lot. Yeah, yeah. And I thought the end was cool. I liked the the little showdown in the festival. Yeah, yeah. I like Gintoki a lot. I think he's like really, really, really fucking cool. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I like him so much. I, I, he has I'm like really good himself. character design. His outfit mm-hmm. fucking slams. Mm-hmm. Um, his whole design is really good. His attitude's good. He's got Joseph's voice actor, which is great. Yeah. Um, oh my God! It's a Joseph fighting a Dio. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's Joseph versus Dio. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed that. I just um, I just realized it right now. Now continue. <laughs> yeah. The the whole thing is is great. Everything about him is awesome. So when he shows up at the end, and he's like, "Oh, are you putting on a superhero movie? How about you let me play the hero?" I was like, "Fuck yeah, buddy! Let's go!" <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love this guy. Yeah. I th- I think he's got a lot. For some reason, I think I don't know if it was intentional or it's like completely by accident. I think they've made maybe an ex- the most relatable uh, Shonen Jump protagonist by the fact that he is, he seems to be one hates the police, doesn't trust the government, is constantly poor, likes reading Shonen Jump, <laughs> is extremely lazy, loves sweets. Like there's so many things about him, but he's also like the MC, and he's also gonna have the cool moments. And when he does do the cool shit he's able to do the cool shit like when he's holding back the sword and he's still kind of like joking with him saying about talking about his inner beast like basically making fun of the entire idea of there being a beast inside him by saying it's fucking Sadaharu that he lives with this is the white beast inside of him yeah <laughs> i'm kind of with you on that one that i feel like that's probably why it felt like when he was missing for a couple episodes beforehand, like some of the ones that had less of a minute, maybe it felt a little bit like there was missing something just because we end up liking him so much that it kind of feels like he should at least show up somewhere. Like, I don't think. The... Yeah. And I think this is the episode that made me start liking Okita a lot more too. When he shows up with Kagura and they're both just like, all right, <laughs> who the fuck is fucking up my festival? Yeah. They're both just like, we were having such a good time. How fucking dare you? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I I agree with that one completely. So that was seventeen, great episode here. Uh, next, we're gonna go into episode eighteen, which is the most <laughs> divisive one based off of what we were talking about beforehand. Uh, the one, the title that we have here is called "Ah, My Home Is Indeed Still the Best," which I don't know if that was what it was called on Crunchyroll. I feel like it was something different. But let's go with that. This one has absolutely nothing to do with what this episode was about, which is about catching a panty feed. Yes, which is just the worst episode, I think, of the ones that we watched. <laughs> I did not enjoy it, but... Go ahead, talk about I, okay. it. Okay, it had some, It's literally just... Uh, Shinpachi's sister it gets her panties stolen, and they're like, ah, oh, what a sick fuck, but also, we like panties, ha ha ha. And then <laughs> this they're like, has a lot right, of just cool. being like, let's talk about real in deep about panties for a bit. That's literally all it is. The whole, the whole thing is. It and is. then they're like, okay, well, we're going to make a plan to stop them. And we're going to bait them with panties and catch them. And then they do that. And that's the episode. 
yes, but uh, I'll at least go with my specific, some of the things I like. This episode also starts off to let you know it's 2006 by there being a Rastafarian skeleton man. <laughs> who sells... Yes, who mugs, uh, or no, what is he, like, dupe Shinpachi? Yeah, he, he sells d- him like a shitty fake thing and runs away. But it's called St- Space Monster Stefan, and it looks a lot like Elizabeth. This is never brought up again. They just want yeah, you to know that... Yeah, it's never mentioned again, even though it's just, um... It's just Elizabeth. Yeah, and it also gets stabbed. It do, which is um, the also when the Rustafarian skeleton runs away, he goes run away. <laughs> he just fucking yep. bolts away and immediately, he just runs and that's it. Um, the Stefan thing, the it's uh, the joke immediately ends is that the the, the reason he wanted Stefan was to give to his sister, and the second he shows up, she fucking stabs it in the middle, and he goes Stefan, no! He's immediately like he's like yeah. what. Was I duped into He's buying horrified. this? Yeah. And then she actually <laughs> legitimately kills him. And he goes, Stefan, no! You killed Stefan! What have you done? <laughs> like, he cares so much about this stupid thing that he got duped into buying for no reason. Uh, some other things, uh, some specific notes is that when uh, Kintoki's talking about what kind of underwear women wear, he says, I'm not a fan of thongs. They take away his girl's modesty and the pleasure of men. <laughs> yep makes for some reason the idea of I, I was like trying to think of like what does he mean by that last part specifically like what is he going on for him oh, but, oh wait this episode actually did have one of my favorite jokes of the night though and it was when they were detailing the plan and oh. shinpachi's sister keeps pulling out different pairs of her panties um <laughs> And Shinpachi's like, can you all please have some respect for the brother who's being forced to watch this over and over again? And Kakura goes, that's just how young men climb the ladder into adulthood. <laughs> yes, okay, yeah, that line, fantastic. Yes. Uh, uh, at, at some point, his sister also starts threatening him, and he says that your threats are not like someone who wear is not what a civilized panties wearing person would say. You sound more like a naked jungle warrior type of statement. Is the weird again? There's so much like back and forth of him trying to justify what specific women wear what and what their personality goes with, and it also <laughs> all ends with him getting his ass kicked immediately. <laughs> he immediately gets beat up for the statement. Um, and then also I like the moment where they're like, so Akagura and the sister go away and he's like, so do we have any leads? He's like, who do you think? And then they look down and Kondo has been under the table the entire time. Yep. (laughs) He's immediately (laughs) like, your sister's panties are gone. Who the fuck do you think is the most likely suspect? (laughs) I also like how he immediately cops to being a stalker. No problem. No problem. (laughs) He's just like, yes, I am. I'm a stalker, but I'm not a thief. <laughs> As I think is a specific line of thinking there. Uh, he also, the when they're sp- explaining specifically that only losers are the ones who get the panties, uh, Kintoki reveals that he got a pair of panties and he assumed that Santa gave it to him. He and thought then, it was from Santa Claus. Yeah. And he goes like, this is not the, the season for it. And then he goes like, you know, Santa is a 24 seven job. <laughs> like he very much goes to defend Santa and that he could yeah, immediately, <laughs> immediately, um, he also is the reason he wants to catch the thief is because how dare the thief realize that he doesn't know how to get a woman, which based off of how he acts in some future episodes, it makes a hundred percent sense why he's not able to get a girl. Um, uh, specific, I guess this episode also makes sense based off how he specifically talks to them in their face. Um, he calls the re when they say, when they put up the panty for like a trap, they said he's a genuine pervert because only a pervert would care, care about quality over quantity. That's why he knows he would go for just one <laughs> over just a bunch of them. Cause only a true pervert would go for only one, uh, for the quality of one over just a bunch load of them. Um, when they're dressing up, when they're preparing or training, Kagura is dressed up as Bruce Lee for some reason. And then there's also a guy in full night armor who I want to talk about, Last episode, I think his name is Yamazaki. He's the I've been calling him the, the one that th- stole the the food from Hijikata. Yes. He, I also call him the tennis racket Shishingumi because the reason I wanted to talk about it is that when they show this Shishingumi training, for some reason he's just like in the background with a tennis racket. And <laughs> yeah, he always has like a badminton racket. Yeah, he always has a badminton racket, and he also has one. He's training in full uh, night armor, and at the end of the training session, I think he just passes out in the night armor to let you know that maybe it wasn't the smartest thing. And then the actual best part of this episode, which I think is the part where... It kind of took it over the top for me, which is the why it turned into something I liked over something that I just thought was kind of meh throughout, was the landmine joke. 
when they start doing the landmines, it is the most simplest joke in the world. But something it's, about it's the, the dumbest joke ever, and it's so fucking funny. It's so funny. It's it's every single. Maybe it's the timing specifically of how they do it. Every and the best part is they they vary up the timing of it. So like sometimes someone will take one step and explode, and sometimes they'll sprint halfway across the yard and explode. And every time you're like, "There's no way they're gonna do it." They do it again immediately. <laughs> The the when they catch the the pandy thief and it's like right underneath where he is and they're like oh I guess there was a landmine underneath there too <laughs> like they thought that he was gonna get away but he gets uh immediately taken out by one um at the end when Okita because the reason Hijikata also is helping because the Shishingumi are helping is that he got a pair of panties so he says how dare he and I think the one time a pair of panties shows up he immediately like slashes it in half he's like so angry that this person would yeah. assume he's the kind of man who would want to get. <laughs> so unbelievable. and then okita reveals at the end of the episode that was him the whole time yeah and this is just an excuse so he could run around and eventually also get hit by the landmine and i think it ends with the entire the entire episode ends with the entire like all the land mills and all the landmines activating at once um and then there's an end bit about the bandit who says hey if you're a loser watching this right now feel free to sign up to this mail letter and the winner will get a free pair of panties Make sure to send us specific specific details about why you can't get a woman, and we look we look forward to reading it next uh, next week. And then I think his sister shows up immediately, kicks his ass, and goes like, "We're not doing that. What <laughs> what are you doing here?" Um, also, I want to say just because uh, in case anyone's wondering, I didn't get it at first, but apparently this is a reference to when the panty thief gets taken down. And there's like an extremely dramatic shot of like it shows like Sagittarius and his fist is up in the air and then he falls over. This is a reference to Rao's death from Fist of the North Star. <laughs> I was wondering why they were doing such an <laughs> elaborate thing, but apparently that's very similar to the famous death of Rao in Fist of the North Star. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Yeah, it's pretty good. So this episode you are not a fan of. It's just that the the primary joke is not my kind of joke, and it also mm-hmm. got like really old really fast because it was the yes. only joke Burn until down. the landmines. Until we got to the landmines, the only joke was Penny Penny Thief. How dare he? But also, <laughs> panties are pretty cool. And I was like, this is really getting <laughs> exhausting. Let's get into um, yeah. There was a I cut out a lot yeah. of it. I just specifically brought up the ones that I thought were funny to mention, but there was a lot of panty talk. <laughs> like too much to a certain extent but i i ended up liking it overall it was definitely one of those things where i feel like the silly moments come out to me more often and i just remember like there really is just a weird dead space of maybe like a good solid maybe seven minutes of of getting to the part where we should just go get him like if they actually had quickly just gone to the point of just like okay let's go get him uh, it would probably work out a little bit better. Some of the panty jokes work better, like like the one you mentioned <laughs> I like about when, the clown. Uh, when Okita was like, "Why don't we just go and get just some random person and say he is, so we can leave?" <laughs> and, <laughs> and then he just kind of like, "We could, yeah, we totally could." And then, <laughs> yeah, that was that was pretty good, so considering how gung ho he was for him. So some good bits over it, but uh, for you, could have used less panties in general less panty time. if it wasn't the only joke i don't think it would have bothered me that bad because like i'm not i'm not so much of a prude that i can't handle any of these jokes and they didn't get like gross with it like yeah. at no point were they stripping characters or anything like that it was literally just like they were holding panties but like <laughs> it was the only joke for like the whole episode i, I think actually the grossest they get is when kagura explains that she has a g-string and it's because it's the yes only, that... it's the only thing she wears <laughs> Yeah, because it's the only pair that she owns, and so and it's, it, like, destroyed. Yeah, and then he goes, like, nobody wants that. It's gross and stinky, or something like that. <laughs> they, it's, like, the reason yeah, why nobody wants Yeah, that's the, that's the worst they get. Yeah, I think that's the worst they get, so. There you go. That is episode 18 for you. I don't know how this specific title of uh, My Home is... Maybe it's also a, a, a Rao reference that I'm not catching. <laughs> Maybe we should both see Fist of the North Star. Watch all seen... of Fist of the North Star and then come back to the Panty Thief episode. Oh, yeah. Okay, everyone stop right here. <laughs> Watch what, however many episodes. I can't act- actually. I'm going to add it to the list because I would love to talk about the extreme violence that is inside Fist of the North Star. <laughs> We're fucking going back to the 80s with the fucking, like, uh, back when they could show blood when characters are, like, getting one eye poked and then, like, 50 million guts. <laughs> 
shoot out of their head for some reason. Oh, that'd be fun. I'll add it to the list. We'll talk about it later when we head to episode 50 of Gintama. But for now, let's talk about episode 19, which is... Why is seawater salty? It is because you city people do your toilet business while swimming. Which mm. is slightly different in Crunchyroll for some reason, because I think in Crunchyroll it's because every time you city people swim, you pee. Yeah. Slight difference on that one for sure. Same uh, theme, though, of you should stop peeing in the fucking water. <laughs> so tell us what this one's about, Zen. Uh, it's a really hot day, and Gintoki and Hasegawa are like, ah, it's really fucking hot. And they want to go to the beach, but they can't because the beach is closed because there's a man-eating alien. And then someone puts a bounty out on the alien. And so they're like, let's go to the beach and kill the alien. They go to the beach, and they just decide they're not going to do that, and they just start fucking around at the beach instead. Uh, and then the alien appears and attacks. And it's it's supposed to be a parody of, like, beach episodes. Mm -hmm. um and then the alien attacks and instead of killing it uh kagura almost kills them by chucking a giant rock at them and then the alien (laughs) saves them and then it turns out that the alien just wanted to have fun but he looks scary so everyone assumed he was going to kill people yeah and then uh, at the end the they they end up working together and everything's happy hunky dory uh i think they say the beach has turned into a water park at the end with all the aliens because they showed the kids playing on the aliens back i think uh for this also i should say for this specific episode uh the beginning bit is a sensei um of them asking in toki how come you only wear one kami uh Oh, what is your wardrobe? Because it looks like you only wear one kimono. And he says, I actually have four that all look exactly the same. Um, because the main character shouldn't change their outfit. Yeah. Yeah. He says like, it would be a pain in the ass to animate if I wore something different every single episode. Also, Lupin only had one suit. So come on. <laughs> he specifically says Lupin the third only ever wore one suit and no one complained. So why are you compl- Why are you coming after me for this? He, he makes a very good point. Lupin also has like 5,000 episodes and he only wears the one suit. <laughs> uh, and I think this end bit is also uh, him looking at four different kimonos going, maybe should I wear something different? <laughs> like it's his kimono, but with wildly different colors, I think is the end bit for this one. Um, For this one, I think... Uh, they also mentioned that this episode, the reason they have that beginning bit is because everyone's wearing completely different clothes from usual. Um, some things I specifically liked in it is that there's a a bit, I think, a kid falls right in front of Hasegawa. <laughs> and it's like the shittiest bike fall in the world. And the kid immediately starts crying. And his mom says, like, stop crying. Get over here. And he goes like, <laughs> and he just cries and goes back on his bike for some reason I thought that was really funny just the way he fucking falls over in extreme heat and the uncaring nature of for this kid made me laugh um Kagura makes a mixtape um called the best I think is what she calls it she calls it, it, it the best. it's called my best my best <laughs> she calls it my, my best. best yeah yeah. And, she, and they immediately go like no one wear no one uses cassette players he goes like i'm no, we're not and she's immediately like said no one could hear my best <laughs> my yeah, best she's like i work so hard on this <laughs> and then when they do catch um there there's like a sexy pose lesson from uh how do you say this her nickname is like a toy right or how do you pronounce it a toy which which character we're talking about sister the sister because their nickname the is Sister O-T-A-E. Uh, oh God, o- Otai. I think was I've always Otai. said it. Her last name is I think Tay. Oh, it is. Like so yeah, I guess it would be Otay. Otay. I, I I feel like damn it, I always pronounce that as Tai because I think the dub of Roroni Kenshin has a character named Tay, but <laughs> the the dub pronounces it Tai. All right, for the for the time being, we'll call it Tai. If someone feels free to correct us on I'm, this, I'm we'll ninety percent sure you're right that her name is Tay, okay. that it's Ote. Okay, we'll go with. I'll just go with Tay for the time being. Um, when they're, t- they're when they're trying to get a ride, she gives them a sexy pose lesson, and all of them do it, including Sadaharu. And yep. she, and, as she's giving them specific instructions, she uh, her end up plan was to just kick their ass directly into the car to stop directly the car. in front of the car, and it's not just one of them; she kicks all four of them, yes. including Sadaharu. 
And Sadaharu was the only one she needed to kick because he's the only one that can immediately stop the car. The other three just get run over for no reason. <laughs> yeah, they just get hit with the, by the car. Uh, no, this is the one where he says, like, he says if, um, because when they get to the beach, because they hear that there was going to be a reward for catching the, the alien, um, he says, I will give you something that passed down from the generation. I was kidding when I put that up there. I'll give you this. And it's a shirt that just says, cool samurai. And, uh, this is the reason why they, um, he says, I will give you the cool samurai shirt. He says, uh, don't try and give me that cool samurai shirt because if it is, it would cause my mother to hit me. It would cause my mother, it would push my mother to domestic violence if I ever wore this shirt. <laughs> Uh, that shirt is also the reason, um, uh, that shirt is also the reason why they eventually put that guy on a cross and use him as bait and stuff like that. Uh, Hasegawa specifically that, mentions- okay. That mm -hmm. might also be one of my favorite jokes of the entire night, is when he's floating out at sea in the cross, and the mm -hmm. sea monster picks him up, and then- uh, he goes like, that's it, I've had it. I'm going to show you what happens when you mess with a man of the sea. And Gintoki goes, oh my god, they've joined forces somehow. <laughs> and that was really good, because they had been treating him like pure shit the entire time. Yeah, they've been episode. treating him like shit the whole time. Immediately, just like dunking <laughs> on him the entire time. So when he finally gets a little bit, he joins forces with it. Um, when Hasegawa was giving his reasons as to why they should capture the alien, he talks about how this beach was very important to him, how it was the beach is where he first met his wife. And when they show him meeting his wife, he's like peeing into the ocean and his wife is just like shows up while he's mid pee. And when he's yeah, giving just peeing into the ocean. Yeah. And when he, when he finishes, uh, his, the sister shows up and she's like, Oh, yeah, I talked to the committee. If we catch it, we'll get some kind of, like, reward for it. And he's like, we don't, we don't want to do it because of my ocean thing? He's like, we're doing it because we're going to get paid. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, he keeps saying, do you understand my feelings? <laughs> do you understand and my the feelings? Only, yeah, the only one who says yes is the sister. And in response, she gives him... Uh, um, for some omelet. reason, she can't cook eggs, but she only cooks... That's the only thing she cooks on screen. <laughs> It's the only thing. And, it's... and he eats one, and the sound is like... <laughs> it's supposed to be an omelet. And he turns blue. And and then she's like, would you like the other one? And then he and he's like, I'm okay. And he looks at Kagura, and he starts talking to her, but she never stops pointing the other omelet at him the entire time. Yeah. She's just kind of standing there waiting for him to see. Also, like, I... I think Kagura might be my favorite character, because the bit that she has... When when he the Hasegawa was like, oh yeah, you can't go swimming because you can't be out in the sun because you're a, a yato and they have they're sensitive to sunlight. And she's like, yeah, must be nice to swim. And she says it like five times. And then he looks over and she's got a boulder and she's like, I'm not in the mood for other people to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> and she's just gonna kill them with the fucking boulder for swimming. Giant rock. I, I really like Kagura. a lot of the jokes of Kagura are just really funny <laughs> for whatever reason. It's I think it's a mixture of the character being so insanely strong, her being an, an innocent girl, and also her being ready to go savage at any point. Like whenever they're ready to do a joke of her, it's always funny. And I want to say it's because they're willing to do whatever because most characters will just be like, well, it's Kagura, it's fine. <laughs> But yeah, when, and she also holds that rock the entire time, even when the, the guy's showing up, when the, the sea monster's showing up to attack, she never lets go of the rock until near the end when she actually throws it. Um, also, an early bit in the beginning, because I realized it, they're eating this like icicle pop because it's super hot out. And for the first time ever, it's one of those icy pops that come in two pairs. Have you ever had one of those as a kid? Yeah, the, the ones that like split in the middle. Yes. And they drink it from the top and at yep. that moment i realized holy shit have you are you supposed to drink them have you not been doing that wrong <laughs> I've, I've been cutting them in the middle and biting into them like ice <laughs> uh, i bite into them like ice also but i never cut them out of the middle no i cut them straight from the middle i cut them straight from because the, the beginning part i just never understood what their purpose was i was like this tiny ass hole ain't big enough for what i need i'm gonna cut it right in the middle and get direct access to that sweet juice baby let's go <laughs> with the sweet ice cold juice inside so when i was watching them i was like i had no idea this is how you're actually supposed to drink one of these because i didn't realize that you could drink it from the top like that 
Uh, so that was a fun uh, thing to realize there. Um, I also like it when it's super hot and they start like all fainting, and they're just immediately like all super tired from the heat. And I think the the, the car ride is actually really funny too. Oh, yeah, the car because uh, Ote is like acting like it's perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. And Kagura's like irritating the shit out of him. Like, can you play the driver? She's like, can you play, play my tape? Hey, it's keeping the window down. Turn the AC on. Play my and best. Play my behind best. Her, behind her is Shinpachi, Kintoki, and Hasegawa, and Sadaharu. And they're Just, fucking matched together. Yeah. And I think what happens, Sadaharu pisses in the back of the car, right? He does piss in the back of the car. Yeah. I think. And that causes Shinpachi to grab the wheel and just turn it violently. And, and they crash the car, and then they all get out of the car, and they're like, what a useless fucking car. What a stupid <laughs> driver. While the driver's just, like, crying to himself. <laughs> I think... I, I, I take everything back. My favorite bit in all of Gintama so far is when they fuck somebody over, and then they're like, that guy fucking sucks. <laughs> That's a pretty good bit, too. <laughs> Damn it, there's so many good bits in here. Because, I, I, yeah, I just now realized, yeah, that whenever they're fucking over someone, they immediately make it seem like it's yeah. their fault. <laughs> they're always, like, this absolute idiot loser. Unbelievable. Unprofessional. <laughs> it's <laughs> so fun. Yeah, and Cocker's even like, yeah, what kind of car doesn't have a cassette player? <laughs> even though after she was just told that no car has a cassette player anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that was this episode. Uh, those are all the parts I liked from it. I thought it was pretty solid. What is there anything else specifically that you liked from it that you while you were watching it? Uh, oh, not the... that jumped out at me. I mean, it was a pretty just like comedy episode the whole time, but it was yeah. it was good. It, it was, was quality. Solid one. It was a very solid comedy one. Uh, and it also really dealt with the thing that I hate the most, which is heat. Uh, it might just be because I spent one, one summer in California with no air conditioning for the entirety of it. And it was the closest I've ever felt like I was going to die. Uh, it was a shared family experience. All of us remember that summer. (laughs) And so it makes us, so anytime I see anything, anything related to, an episode related to heat, I immediately get that feeling of, oh my god. It, like, brings me back to a bad time. So, this one did a very good job of catching up with that, of saying, like, what? Well, how do you beat the heat? And the answer is, I don't know, go do something. <laughs> go away from the house, because it's always colder outside. And finally, we have the final episode here on episode 20, Beware of Conveyor Belts, which is a title that is referencing one specific joke. <laughs> Uh, Zen, why don't you tell us what happens in it? Uh, okay. The Shinsengumi, uh, they think their headquarters is haunted. Uh, I think because they're, like, telling ghost stories or something. They're, like, they're fucking around and scaring each other. Yeah. Uh, and they end up thinking that their, their base is haunted by, uh, a woman in red. Um, and then, like, a bunch of them are dying. Like, yeah, they're getting absolutely. killed, and they think it's the haunting of the, the scary ghost woman. And so they go to get exorcists, and the exorcists are just odd job skin. In, like, <laughs> disguises. Terrible. <laughs> in, like, shitty disguises. disguises. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely terrible. And uh, they just make up a bullshit story of the, like, the, the conveyor belt joke is just, like, their, their shitty excuse for why the woman died. Yeah. It's like, oh, she died on a conveyor belt. Uh, yeah. And so she's haunting it, and but they they blow their cover because they just fuck up <laughs> like they're idiots. Yeah, they're fighting. Um, they're fighting over the backstory that they're giving it because in the beginning they say it's just a a manager is the reason that's haunting it is, and then they go it's a woman, and then they have to give a reason as to why it's a suddenly a woman, and then when they're trying to explain it amongst themselves, they get confused and they're just like, I don't understand how how. Can the floor manager be this and also this? He's like, listen, you need to shut up right now with your <laughs> with your terrible disguise. My terrible disguise. Your terrible disguise. Like they just like fight against amongst each other and eventually reveal themselves to be the the regular crew. Yeah, and then they uh, they get arrested for a little bit and then released because they were like they just needed money. Um, they decide that they're going to help with the ghost problem anyway because Kondo is like so terrified that he can't be alone because he's so afraid of the ghost yes uh then he gets attacked by the ghost 
Um, and then Gin and Hishikata are having like a contest of who's more scared. And then so it goes like, oh, it's the ghost, and they both freak out. Um, they they do find the ghost, and then everyone runs away. Uh, and they also are like, fuck, what happens? They they run away, but they, they they find the ghost. They all run away, but Gintoki and Hijikata are like, haha, idiots. But then they also see the ghost and run. Um, uh, yeah, they end up hiding behind something. The other, which is Kagura, um, Okita, and Shinpachi are hiding behind something, and they light something to see, and the ghost doesn't go after them, and that's when they realize, I don't think it's a ghost, and then when they go to check on the other Shinjingumi, they notice that they also have mosquito bites, so it's not a ghost, it's actually a mosquito, and that's the reason why the mosquito didn't go in there, because they had like something that was warding off mosquitoes uh, that they lit up, I think. And that's when they got back to um, Hichikata and Gintoki, who are <laughs> being scared shitless by the ghost. And then uh, it turns out the ghost is not a ghost, but it's an Amanto that is like a like a like a mosquito, like a bug. Mm-hmm. Um, and they accidentally catch it, like sort of. They like they didn't mean to, no. and they just caught it, and then. Uh, she says that she's sorry, but she needed their their blood because she was pregnant. And then uh, Gin and Hichikata have like another "I'm not scared, you're scared" contest. And then they both get terrified of Kagura just existing. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, at the very end bit, it's a callback to the beginning of the episode where he Hichikata was looking for mayonnaise for his dish. And it ends with him having just like a a plate, and it's whatever he's eating is just covered in mayonnaise, like to a disgusting degree of mayonnaise. Uh, That's not yeah. the first time he talked about mayonnaise either, is it? Because like in the in the festival one, he also he was like, "There better mayonnaise. not be a shitload of mayonnaise on this." Yeah, he mentioned that too. He he's talking. He, I don't know if it's specifically about Hijikata because I think Hijikata in every. Um, thing I've seen is obsessed with food in some way. Like in Fago, he loves pickles for some reason. <laughs> and in, in Gintama, he really likes mayonnaise for some reason. I don't know. Uh, you said he was in Kenshin, right? Was there a specific quirk? No, o- Okita is in Kenshin. Oh, so not him. So maybe it's something related to the real person. Maybe it's that level of joke. You can never tell when it comes to anime who this is either like an extreme pun or a callback to Japanese history that neither one of us are getting. Oh, Hichikata is in Kenshin. Is he? You would know. Uh, okay. So he is, but he is, but he is dead before the series begins and only appears on panel for like a little bit. Got you. Got you. Ah, interesting. Okita so, is also dead, but he actually has like a little backstory. A little thing. fight with Kenshin off, like in a flashback, like a little tiny one. Okay. And then um Hajime Saito is the Shinsengumi guy who's still alive in Kenshin. Okay, got you. Um some stuff that I liked in this one specifically. I remember Okita was doing a ritual to kill Hijikata. And that was the reason that he, back when he was messing with the other Shinigami, he's like, I don't believe in ghosts. And then he hears a noise outside, and then it's, he's, like, wearing, like, a ritual outfit, and he has, like, a a doll. With, I think the doll has, like, a little picture of him on it, and he was driving a stake through it. And he's like, what are you doing out here? And he's like, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of having a stroll outside. And he's like, you were cursing me, weren't you? And he's like, no. <laughs> He's very much the dying. No. <laughs> yeah. And I think later on he says, like, wow, I think my curses against Hijikata were actually were working. Um, I liked it when um because Kondo keeps talking about how he's how he's scared and he asks specifically I think he asked Kagura, can you accompany me to the bathroom because I'm very scared? And she goes, Yes, of course. <laughs> like without a second hesitation, she's just like, okay, let's go. She, and she holds his hand like a like a toddler, she takes him to the bathroom. And then when he gets caught, he also uh she I think she says like, uh, did you get your thing stuck in your zipper? And then when they show up, he's like, What happened? She's like, he got his thing stuck in the zipper and then when they actually reveal his some for some reason his head's in the toilet for whatever reason. Um, when the mosquito 
was caught and she's talking about her backstory she gives like this insanely detailed sob story where she's like i'm pregnant with my uh former uh boss's baby but he has a family and i don't want to ruin his family life so i quit my job so i i was out looking i'm a mosquito and i need blood i need strong men blood and you guys were right nearby Uh, i'm a single mother and i need the, the blood of strong men to raise my baby like she goes into such a like a long ass rant about why she needs her baby, and I liked I couldn't remember a bit of it just because it was so detailed of it. But I did like it when they were fighting as the ghost experts and they were trying to get their story straight because they just could not figure out a way. I think they were saying like there's no way that a convey a woman could die on a conveyor belt. Like it just doesn't make any sense where the conveyor belts even come from. And he's like, no, it's okay. It 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 works out. I swear. Trust me. Um. And yeah, I think that's basically it for this episode. I remember. Oh my god, uh, Kondo was also in Kenshin. Oh my god, that's the... <laughs> maybe you need to rewatch Kenshin. Well, he's he's also uh, off screen. Uh, oh. Not never appears is just discussed uh, lightly. He he's mentioned by Saito. The only Shinsengumi one that's alive is Saito. So the three that are in Gintama are also in Kenshin, but they're all dead. <laughs> funny how that worked out actually now i'm curious because i i'm pretty sure there was in uh let me see Hijikata. Oh, oh my god there's a saito in gintama too jesus really yeah but he doesn't appear until way down the line oh, okay, episode so 294 so we're so not even close to him no we're nowhere but he's near. the but he's the former commander of the third squad of the shinsengumi which is exactly who the one in kenshin is as well Oh, okay. So Sa- Saito also shows up in Fago later on. He's the he's the unit coming out this year. As I was looking, I was like, I'm pretty sure there's another. Yeah, Shinsengumi. well, I know that the I know the Shinsengumi and Kenshin is modeled off the actual Shinsengumi. Like they're yeah. all the real people. So I, I guess the Gintama one is as well. Yeah, of course. Funny enough, Gintama is kind of making me uh, super bitter that I've never been able to pull an Okita. <laughs> I had made pe- my peace with it long ago, saying, whatever, I don't need her. And now that I'm rewatching it and I'm seeing Okita here, it's actually infuriating me a little bit that I don't have all the Shishigumi. Because I have Hishikata as well. I'm only missing her. <laughs> it's annoying. But anyway, yeah, this episode specifically, I think for me, ended up being... I think just the weakest in general, just because I, I think like the overall plot was just kind of hee ho for me, I guess a little bit. It's Maybe... it it yeah, it's just kind of like yeah. I don't really like the episodes where the whole crux of the episode is like one joke. Yeah, and this one was a ghost one, and I don't think they do enough of what the ghost thing is. And I think pretty on early on, you realize it's going to be an Amato. Because I think the reveal about basically everything is that if it's if they think it's, it's a spooky, always an Amato, yeah, yeah it's <laughs> no matter what it is, it's an Amato. It. Yeah. So, um, I also feel like they could have done a little bit more with them acting a little. I, I think I did like the specific screams because again, the Gintoki um, voice actor is very good at doing these like shrill screams that doesn't that somehow sound like him but don't really sound like him at all. So I like hearing him scream. Well, yeah, it's the same thing as as Joseph. Everything yeah. he says is funny, and he's like he's got really good comedic timing. Yes, exactly. So I like that stuff about it. But it is definitely, I think, the first like it. I didn't really hate any specific aspect because there's it. It was very much not like something worth hating, but it just kind of like existed. Yeah, was, it like, wasn't like offensive. It wasn't like no. bad. But the, I think the thing with Gintama is like a lot of the times, like it's really good episodes even now because apparently we're still in the part that everyone says sucks and yes. it's like terrible the entire There's, time which i yeah. don't agree with a lot of because i think a lot actually... of the episodes have been really really good yeah um but then we... you get these really dumb ones that are like borderline seinfeldian like sitcom episodes ba-dum, 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 and yeah. i'm like <laughs> yeah i'm like man i i know how good this show can be so every time i have to waste half an hour watching like the same dumb joke that i did not find funny play out over and over again for half an hour i'm ready to be done yeah though to be fair if they added the seinfeld like <laughs> for like one episode of these specifically i think i would enjoy it a little bit more because it was it would be <laughs> at that point a parody making fun of the haggy the fact that it is yeah i, I would yeah. be okay with that but like Gintama yeah edition. there's just there's some where i'm like okay yeah. <laughs> like this wasn't that funny and it was the entire episode and it's yeah. like whatever it's if they're never bad enough to be like I hate this now. 
Except maybe yeah. 15. 15 was really bad. <laughs> 15 but, uh, was... Uh, 15 really still the worst one. Even the panty one was better than 15. Yes, I would uh, um, that one. But yeah, they, they get... When, when they lean too hard in the dumb joke, you have, the dumb joke has to be good. Like, yeah. when they leaned really hard on the strawberry milk joke, one, the strawberry milk joke was fucking funny. And yeah. two, there was a little bit more depth to that episode. Like, the depth was mostly nothing. But it was just like, oh, this old man wanted to see his first love before he died, and then he does, and then he dies. And you're like, oh, that was, that had a, it was like two minutes of the episode, but it was nice. Yeah. And the joke was funny. Yeah. Yeah. But this one, it was just missing. That specific spark is, I think, the right way of saying it. But other than that, pretty easy just to watch and kind of go down. I think of these, um, I think this one might actually be the one I'd like the least. Like, even if... The panty one can it kind of goes off the rails, specifically if you don't find any of the panty. The like, panty it, one has better funny moments, though. Like when, yeah. when it is funny, it's a lot funnier than this it's episode a lot ever funnier got. Than, yes, yeah. That's what I was gonna say. Is that the funnier the, parts? The in ending that one bit are of the pan. Yeah, the ending bit of the panty episode was a lot funnier than this one. Yeah, so exactly. I, I would probably agree. This was probably my least favorite one. Not mm. in a not in an episode fifteen way, because that's the only one I've mm. actively been like. This was a fucking waste of my time. We're just but saying like, in terms of these specific episodes. Of these five, it was the one I liked the least. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, anything else you want to say about this specific episode before we have some final thoughts nah. and talk about stuff? All right. Nah. <laughs> I was going to say, because you brought it up, which is really funny, is that a lot of the people who are watching us go through it, who are fans of Gintama, are like psyched. They're like... I can't believe we found someone who are actually enjoying the early parts of Gintama. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's funny because I posted a tweet today and I was like, Gintama irritates me because sometimes it's peak fiction and sometimes it's absolute garbage. Uh, I think that was in episode 20 when I was like, this is so stupid and not yeah. funny. Uh, and then people were like, where are you at? Or no, it was the Panty Raid episode. I was like, this is so fucking stupid. Mm -hmm. And they were like, um, which episode are you at? And I told them that one. And they were like, Oh, okay, yeah, early Gintama sucks, it's pretty bad, but, like, if you've already found episodes you consider peak fiction, you're gonna love the series, because it's it's yeah. awful right now, and it gets good later, and I'm like, I thought it was good right now. Yeah, I, f I feel like it's definitely, uh, maybe it's something they've codified into the idea, uh, I don't know why I said codified, I know why I said codified, because it's been in the news a lot lately, but maybe it's, yeah, into, yeah. <laughs> it's into the DNA. First of all, we should uh, codify into the Constitution. <laughs> Everyone should watch the early episodes of Gintama. <laughs> Put it in there, Biden. Anyway, it's probably in the DNA of the entire, like, uh, fan base of where is the most likely chance of someone stopping Gintama and the answer is right here at the beginning and the reason is is because they have the later episodes they know the good parts that yeah, are yeah they know how later. good it, it it will be we do not yes. so so when they are praising the hell out of it and saying oh my god fucking amazing fantastic people have to start back at one it's like saying uh final set fantasy 7 remake is peak fiction and then someone going great i'm gonna start with final fantasy 1 for the ness just doesn't work yeah. out that way you're gonna lose a lot of people yeah. That's just the way of the game is. But if you can find something to enjoy in that specific experience, taking into account when it was released, I think you will enjoy it more. I think most people kind of get put off by the fact that they hear the praise of it, but then they're seeing something that they just aren't really understanding. Like the, like for how much it's getting praised, they're not seeing the specific results of it. And I think that's the reason why a lot of people say that the beginning episodes are bad. I don't think they're bad. I think that they are for their time great because you have to remember it, it was released in 2006 and you have to kind of treat it that way in a lot of cases it's 2006 and it's a comedy like you have to give it some uh leeway a little bit on that because comedy is maybe the thing that ages the worst it honestly can and that's what makes it difficult to go back into some of those but uh i was uh, you know we're enjoying the early parts here and there's definitely some stinkers here but there's definitely enough shining through that we feel confident kind of going through it and continuing it and we will continue continue it. Well, again, once we hit, we're going to stop here at episode 20 because Zen was too busy. So we will gladly share off. Next episode will be tw episodes 21 through 30. That's the ones to yep. watch. I've already watched yep. 21 through 25. 
I won't say anything specific, but I will say there's an episode in here that I really liked. If you want to take a guess as to one of the, which one of those five, which number it is, um, you can base it off of the fact of what my likes are. I think it's very easy to see which one I liked, and I can't wait to talk about it. I was I was telling Zen before the show started, I'm so sad that you could not make it to that episode. <laughs> Because I really wanted to talk about it. But we'll gladly talk about it next week. And we will try again for 10. Um, which will be, like I said, 21 through 30. So if you're joining up with us and you saw all the way for 25, then congratulations, you have five left episodes to watch. <laughs> Don't worry about it. And we will continue on with Gintama. Anything else you want to say before we head off, Beerzen? No, I think I'm good. Uh, I'm glad everyone is liking us watching Gintama. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad you say that it gets way better than this now because I already <laughs> really like it now. So say that, but wait until episode 200 when the Panty Man comes back, and you have to immediately <laughs> reckon with the fact of, oh no, he's back. Because it seems like a lot of characters seem to come back and get off it when you don't expect them. Like I'm surprised that the prince still shows up. Yeah. <laughs> But to be fair, the Prince, every time he comes back, it's funnier. <laughs> so maybe it's a good thing. We'll see. But yeah, that's the end, everyone. Thank you very much for watching, especially if you watched it all the way to the end. Thank you guys so much. Uh, appreciate all the support. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys next time. And until next time, we don't have an end to this. Oh, yeah, I remember the end of it. Until the, <laughs> until the end, everyone, remember, strawberry milky, everyone. <laughs> strawberry milky. <laughs> <laughs> going to be great when we go to other series and we go to very serious ones and i end it with strawberry milky there strawberry well. milky we're gonna we're gonna be watching like uh Yu-Gi-Oh gx when judai is having like his emotional <laughs> breakdown because all of his friends are dead and you're gonna be like all right everybody strawberry milky see ya strawberry milkies everyone we're gonna be watching uh, <laughs> going through uh the death note anime and we'll get to we'll end it on the very serious note of L dying. It's a, an end for justice, going a deep debate of the philosophical views of it, and then I'll go, okay everyone, strawberry milk is goodbye. <laughs> 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 goodbye everyone, strawberry milk is <laughs>